Greetings, CBF family, and welcome to our Tuesday gathering. My name is Kristen McAtee, and I serve as Associate Coordinator for CBF of Oklahoma. I am so blessed to be part of this wide and diverse fellowship, and I'm grateful to each one of you because through these gatherings, through General Assembly, social media, and other publications, you have kept my eyes open to a bigger view of the kingdom and all that God is doing. I recently observed a semi hauling two trailers as it turned a corner. It was an amazing and terrifying sight. In order to move forward, the two trailers first had to move in opposing directions while still staying attached in the middle. I thought to myself that if people had been on board those trailers, everyone would have had a very different perspective of what was happening. Some people would have been quite insistent that the truck was going in completely the wrong direction. Some people would have looked out at the other trailer and been upset thinking that they had turned astray. And for those at the furthermost angles of the journey, they may have felt alone and abandoned, the last holdouts on a journey forgotten by everyone else. Each one of these perspectives would have had a touch of truth, but not one would have been the whole truth. The good news is that a few people would have seen and remembered the connecting lines holding it all together. Those who could see the connections could be open to hearing each viewpoint, putting them together, and trying to create a healthy and a whole picture of the journey. The Cooperative Baptist Fellowship is full of people who still see the connecting lines. We can acknowledge that there are many, many viewpoints on this journey. Sometimes we only see our own perspective but we remember that there is a connection holding us together. Because of this, we are free to hear and respect multiple views. Fellowship, we have turned some really tight corners this year. We've navigated church in a pandemic, racial injustice, and our work towards bold faithfulness, and our connection has stayed strong. I hate to say it and remind you, but we still have some pretty sharp hairpin curves ahead elections, more pandemic, quarantine issues, unrest around the world. This is not a time to be on a journey with people that you can't trust. That's why I'm so grateful that this fellowship is family. Let's continue to share our viewpoints, to respect one another, to give information from every angle of the journey, and to hang on to the knowledge that we are all ultimately connected and journeying in the same direction towards a kingdom of Christ in the world. Welcome to our Tuesday gathering. God bless you. Moving songs for movement. Come behold the Prince of Peace, Jesus, the light of the world. March in love, freedom we reach, Jesus, the light of the world. We walk in.
this has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter out of the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast so we'll remain steadfast and walk in the light, beautiful light, from where the dew drops of mercy shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of Turn me round, turn me round, turn me round, hang on and let nobody turn me round. I'm gonna keep on marching, keep on walking, marching up the freedom trail. Hang on and let no hatred turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Hang on and let no hatred turn me round. I'm gonna keep on marching, keep on marching, marching up the freedom train. ICBF friends and family, uh, it's good to be with you tonight, and I'm thrilled uh, to share a word that has been uh, on my heart and in my mind uh, and in the life of my congregation the last few weeks. Uh, I'd like to share with you a text from Luke chapter 4, uh, Jesus' uh, sermon in Nazareth. This is an important text in the Gospel of Luke because it is the first thing that Jesus says in a public setting. And some people would say it's uh, constitutive of his overall ministry, that this is Jesus uh, saying what he and his work and his life are all about. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this is Jesus' first public pronouncement. We should always pay attention to the first public words of characters in books. And did you hear 
the sorts of people that Jesus' agenda is centered upon. The poor, the oppressed, the imprisoned, the blind. Here Jesus reads a text from Isaiah 61 which says that God's heart and God's agenda centers on people that are all too often left out and marginalized and oppressed. And also part of this text is something we tend to skip over. The favorable year of the Lord, or the year of the Lord's favor. favor. In uh, Hebrew parlance, this was code language for the year of Jubilee. If you want to learn more about that, you can read from Leviticus 25. Uh, But the year of Jubilee was intended to be uh, a practice that the Jewish people observed every 50 years. Uh, Think of it as sort of a Sabbath year on steroids. Uh, They let the land lie fallow as a way of letting creation rest, even as uh, we need rest. Creation as a living, uh, vibrant reality needs rest. In that 50th year, anyone who was uh, enslaved was to be uh, released from bondage. All debts were to be forgiven. And all land was to be returned to its ancestral owners. And so this was a way of rebooting society when injustices uh, were out of whack and when their shared life together uh, was something that fell short of God's intentions for them. The year of Jubilee would have been good news to anyone who was marginalized and depressed, and it would have set their feet to dancing. And yet we have no real evidence that the Jewish people ever observed, actually practiced the year of Jubilee. Uh, It would have turned their society upside down. You can see why they didn't. And honestly, it would turn our society upside down. And you could see why we wouldn't dare do such a thing. And yet Jesus' first public statement in the Gospel of Luke is a Jubilee text, the year of the Lord's favor. It's good news. It's Jubilee joy for people who desperately need it. Jesus rolls up the scroll and says to his people, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. If this is Jesus' first public words in the Gospel of Luke, then his first public word is the word today. Today the scripture is fulfilled. And and, and I don't expect him to say what he says. I expect Jesus to say, Today the scripture is fulfilled in my speaking. But that's not what he says. He says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This scripture is fulfilled to the extent that you actually hear it. The next time that word today shows up in the Gospel of Luke, it's actually toward the end of the narrative, just before Jesus enters Jerusalem and Passion Week begins. Jesus comes to the hometown of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. You'll remember him. And Zacchaeus on the way to his house with Jesus, says a most unthinkable thing. He says, Half my possessions I will give to the poor, and if I've defrauded anyone anything, I will pay them back four times. It's such a jubilee statement. And Jesus turns to Zacchaeus and whoever else is standing there, and he says, Today salvation has come to this house. Not yesterday. We have a lot of talk today about uh, nostalgia of yesteryear, waxing eloquently about the past. But Jesus did not say way back then when the scripture was fulfilled in your hearing. And he doesn't say someday. In the sweet by and by, when we all get to heaven, when the roll is called up yonder. He says here and now, today... This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today is the day to bring good news to the poor, to break cycles of poverty and to prioritize the poor in our budgets, not to try to find ways to give tax breaks to the richest among us. Today is the day to make sick people well and vulnerable people whole. Today is the day to release the oppressed 
and to seek justice systems that are restorative and not just punitive. Justice systems that ask how can this be healed, not just how can this be punished. Today is the day to bind ourselves to the Christ who unbinds people from whatever it is that enshackles them. Today is the day. Today is the day for this scripture to be fulfilled in our hearing. This is why we partner with CBF. This is why we've gladly and uh, with a sense of compulsion and call contributed to the McCall Fund and would invite you to do the same. Not yesterday. Not someday. Let's be people who hear this scripture and do it today. May it be so. Amen. Saludos, familia de CBF. Para mí es un honor poder elevar una plegaria a nuestro Dios en favor de aquellos que han sufrido por algún desastre natural recientemente y en favor de la justicia racial. Greetings, CBF family. It is an honor for me to be able to pray to our God for those families who have suffered recently from natural disasters and to be able to pray for racial justice. Padre, en esta hora te presento a esas familias que han sufrido por injusticia racial. Father, I present to you those families who've suffered from racial injustice. Padre, te presento en esta hora a personas que han derramado sangre por injusticia racial y también por aquellos que han sido convictos y perseguidos en un sistema criminal injusto. Father, I also present to you those who've shed blood due to racial injustice and those, Father, who've been convicted wrongfully by an unfair or in an unfair criminal system. Padre, te pido en esta hora que tú nos sacies de justicia aquellos que estamos hambrientos y tenemos sed de justicia. Father, I pray for you to satisfy those of us who hunger and thirst for justice. También presentamos delante de ti en esta hora, Padre, a aquellas personas que han sufrido por algún desastre natural recientemente. Father, we also pray to you for those families who have suffered recently from natural disasters. Padre, yo te pido que en esta hora tú estés allí consolándolos. Yo te pido que en esta hora tú estés allí presente, Padre, reparándoles el daño también. Father, we ask for you to, to comfort their souls. At the same time, we ask you to repair the damages that they suffered. Padre, te presento por las organizaciones de Ayuda y respuesta a desastres de CBF y por todas las organizaciones sociales que día a día estamos afuera, allá afuera en el mundo, Señor, tratando de redimir nuestras comunidades en el nombre de Cristo. Father, we ask for you to bless CBF, disaster response and any other uh, social services agencies within our network, Father that are out there redeeming our community in your name. Padre, te pedimos por los pastores y por los líderes de CBF que están allá afuera, Señor, trabajando con estas familias que han sido afectadas. Fortalécelos en el nombre de Jesús. Father, we ask you for those pastors and leaders who are out there trying to comfort and satisfy the souls of those who've been hurt by natural disasters recently. Padre, y lo hacemos con la confianza de que hubiésemos desmayado si no creyésemos que veremos la bondad de Jehová en la tierra de los vivientes. Father, we do this knowing that we will see your hand in the land of the living. En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. 
Good evening. I'm Rick Burnett, one of CBF Global Missions field personnel, also serving as CBF's domestic disaster response manager. Our CBF family has always responded generously when disaster strikes. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew was CBF's disaster response initiation. Thirteen years later, we engaged wholeheartedly following the horrors of Hurricane Katrina. It was during that time that CBF refined its disaster response approach. Not equipped to provide rapid response efforts and relief efforts such as large-scale feeding, what we do best is long-term recovery such as cleanup and repairs in underserved communities at the invitation of our state and regional CBF organizations. In this manner, we have assisted communities impacted by the 2017 hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria. The next year, we joined forces to respond to hurricanes Florence in North Carolina, as well as Michael in the Florida Panhandle. And last year, we shared our love with CBF Bahamas communities devastated by Hurricane Dorian, providing roughly $200,000 towards materials and contractors assisting at least two dozen properties in, pro in partnership with CBF Florida with significant involvement from various CBF congregations as well as our Canadian and American Baptist friends. Obviously such recent response has come with significant cost, leaving us with only so much with which to respond to the anticipated 2020 storms, including recent events such as Hurricanes Hannah and Isaias. COVID-19 is another disaster that continues to impact everyone. Consequently, CBF has developed guidelines to inform any 2020 disaster effort, response effort to minimize opportunities for this virus to spread. Unfortunately, the pandemic means that we will not be able to widely recruit volunteers to serve in distant locations. Should volunteers be necessary, will focus on local teams only accepting healthy recruits in addition to carrying out on-site symptom checks with mandatory masks and social distancing. For access to these guidelines, you can visit the CBF Disaster Response webpage. Just type CBF Disaster Response into your search engine to find the page. And while you're there, you can ex access various PDF resources, including checklists for family emergency supply kits and first aid kits, as well as flood cleanup lists with procedures for recovery teams and property owners. Please refer to the CBF Disaster Response webpage for information related to specific disasters that we're involved with responding to. We will offer timely updates on any CBF response including related prayer needs, as well as opportunities to give and possibly serve. As we move into the peak of the 2020 hurricane season, during this time of coronavirus, let's prepare for the worst while hoping for the best. And let's all live into the great commandment by loving our neighbors as ourselves, especially by wearing masks and maintaining social distances. Thank you. Good evening, CBF. I'm delighted to be with you all once again for the CBF gathering this evening. And I'm here to issue a challenge. And the challenge is around the, the McCall, Emmanuel McCall Racial Equity Fund that was launched on June 19th. June 19th is considered uh, the day of commemoration of the freedom of slaves here in the United States. It's a day that's how it's a holiday that is celebrated from the African-American community since the 1800s. And it was very intentional to mark the beginning of this new racial justice work um, and the fund to support it. We're looking for and asking for CBF individuals and churches to be willing to donate in this first year $400,000. The Emmanuel McCall Racial Equity Fund will help resource three aspects of the racial justice work inclusion work that will help resource the local churches and CBF Global to increase its capacity to have diversity, equity, and, and inclusion. It will help resource the um, advocacy work that is focused on racial justice and equity in various um, ways in terms of education, criminal justice, hunger, 
And the last area is repair work. We want to make sure that the church, CBF itself, will be able to, to make some repair work in the black community, investing in rescue loans or social enterprise or ways that will support and, and shore up the, the livelihood of the black community. So please, we encourage you to send, to contribute. And if you can't make the August 20th deadline but still wish to contribute, go ahead and contribute towards this fund. Remember, it's about resourcing current work and long-term efforts. So we hope that you'll be willing to give. I mentioned before that June 19th, Juneteenth, which is a commemoration of the freedom of the enslaved folks here in the United States. And if you contribute by August 20th of this year, which is the anniversary of the beginning of slavery here in the United States, that you can either be considered a pace setter or foundational donor. So let me explain the difference. A $5,000 contribution towards the Emmanuel McCall Racial Equity Fund um, will make you, will qualify you to be a foundational do donor for the racial justice work. Any contribution you make from now into August 20th, under $5,000, will make you a pay setter. And we're looking for um, those who have a heart for change, those who are interested in learning about racial justice and change, and those who have labored long and want to make sure they leave a legacy so that the work can continue. We're looking for all of you to find a way to contribute financially and, and look for information about how personally you can contribute to the work of racial justice. Thank you.